Hello and welcome back to part six of my playthrough of White Star Rising, part of the Nations at War series from Lock and Load Publishing. And the uh, scenario is, let's get this liberation going. Unfortunately for the Americans, it's not going too well due to a couple of early turn ends because of uh, pulling these quickly. They haven't been able to move up quite as quick as I would have liked, and we are on turn nine. We have inflicted a few uh, casualties on the Germans, although they've eliminated one of our platoons, so let's see what these turns bring. Let's get the decks shuffled. And the solo assistant. Pop the discards in. And okay, what's the first card? The first card is it's the armor. Now of course, knowing what I know now, I would play this completely differently, and so would you, I dare say. So, let's uh, zoom in a little bit. There we are. So, remove markers, check for command status, we're all okay there. Uh, here, sorry. Yeah, the problem is, this one, which we'll have to try and rally in a minute, when it moves, this can opt fire. Walters can opt fire if they have line of sight. So let's first see if we can rally the unit here. The morale is seven, as you can see. So let me just zoom out a little so we can get the dice tower in. Two dice at seven or less. Eight grief. It's not going well. I don't hold up much hope for the Americans now. Um, we'll fire with this undisrupted unit on the mortar. See if we can get it. And also, what I forget as well, I kept hearing little voices saying, don't forget about me, because under here, I keep forgetting, there's an infantry <laughs> platoon. But there we go. So, it's a soft target, so it's going to be ranges three, we're okay, two, five, we're at close range, so it's going to be two at four. We get two hits. This, though, gets a save, a defensive modifier. Gets a 1d6 to try and save. Needs a 5 or more. No, and gets two hits. Gets disrupted and reduced. Look at that. One at five now, instead of two at five. Well, there we are, there's <laughs> the infantry, it'll remind me. Can't do much else with those, because it's disrupted the other one. So that's ops complete. That's it. Whoop. Well, we've got to move forward. One, two, three. Four. That can't fire because it's the extended range, but this can fire. It's desperate times. Ops fire from one of these. They've both got the same stats for firepower and to hit. So 
Uh, well, what am I talking about? This is going to use its um, AP. So the Stug, just to remind us, is 635. So three dice. Oop. Three dice needs to throw fives. It's going after. I think they're both good order. Yeah. So let's see. Three at five. Oh, look at that. That is a miss, mate. And you are opt complete. So is that, but at least we've pushed through the woods there. And that's it, that's the armor's turn gone. What's next? Oh, it's the, uh, the airborne. This can fire when we get in range. One, two, three, we're not in range yet. One, two, three. Yeah, let's move. One, two, three. We do, the reason I'm moving here, this still can't attack us because it's at extended range, but we, I think, next turn can move and fire. Yeah, I don't think we can, well, I'll tell you what, desperate times, desperate measures. I think we were here, weren't we? We're going to go one, two, three. And hope that this pioneer has a bad throw. So they're throwing, their stats are two, two, five. We are now at close range. They are ops firing. What I forgot, of course, in my excitement, is to use the the deck for the uh, for the pyre, uh, for the uh, stug. But anyway, I'll use it now for the pioneers to see if they opt fire. It looks like they will. Yeah, fire. There we go. So they're using the stats of two two five, but because it's close range, it's Two, two, four. Hope for some bad ones. They get a hit. We are in the cultivated hex, cultivated or crops or whatever you want to call it. They get one D6. So they need a five. There we are. They need a five or more to save that hit from hitting. <laughs> Ooh, lovely. Fate is smiling. Oh, looks like it's coming down to the last turn. That's, that's that. Next. It's, oh, it's the infantry. We're having, oh dear. Okay. By the way, I think I mentioned it in the last video, these uh, units, both of them were disrupted, but only through for one of the units. There you go. Typical uh, daft mistake from myself. Right, remove markers. Yes, command status is fine. Whoops. One, two, three. Yeah, we're in, we're in command. I think it's disrupted units. We've got one here. One here, and one here. So morale is six. We've got to throw six or under with two dice. We'll do this one first. Seven, no. This one. 
Yes. So that's not done. This one is. We'll check for this one. Seven, no. That's, uh, that's not good. Two at five. These can't hit us, they're just infantry. So I'm gonna move this one, two. He says messing up the entire stack. And we're going to fire, move and fire at one of these units. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us great options. This one has the heavy machine gun and the HQ's leadership modifier. So we're going to fire at one of these. These can't fire back, ops fire because of extended range. So it is two, three, Four, five, at five, but because we moved and we're going to fire, that goes down to four at six, I think. Firepower goes down by one and the two hit goes up by one. Four at six. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't a six. No, that was a... That was a two. Oh dear, this one is gonna try, that's just one at six then. And he goes, come on, what's the matter? I can do it. <laughs> one hit, that does get a save of 1d6 because they're in the woods. Five or more. No. One of those gets disrupted, they're both the same. But this HQ now has to check to see if it's affected by that disruption. If it throws a one, it gets reduced. No, it's fine. We've got, these are all okay on the top here, aren't they? Oh, there's a, these are okay. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can do something with these. I'm going to move these round. They've got a movement of three. One, two, three. These still can't fire. But this one is going to fire on one of these reduced infantry units so one two we're at a normal range two at five let's see what we get one hit they cannot save because they're out in the open that is disrupted so i'll pop that on that one and pop this back This one is doing the same, but it's only got one at five because it's reduced. So let's see if it has any luck. No. <laughs> That's done. Okay, who's next? It's an end turn. And it's an end turn, so the Germans didn't get a go. I don't know if that's going to be to our advantage, but we'll bring one of those down here. And pop the old marker on there. Right, let's get the ops complete off. There we go.
and it's the last turn. So, be right back. <laughs> well, as you probably saw from my comments in the last turn, I'm getting the wobbles. I'm messing up quite badly, but it's not the end of the world. The first one was this couldn't have moved and fired because it only has a movement factor of three and would not have disrupted the unit there. So I've taken that off. And the other thing, of course, I forgot this was firing at close range, so it would have been two dice at four. And it threw two hits. So what we'll do is we'll throw the armor save for this, which is three at six, and see if we can save those. If not, one of those units will take the consequences. So sorry about that. Here we go. Three at six. Oh, no. So not only is, whoops, one of those disrupted, he says, not going to fly in. It's reduced. And we have to check for the HQ as well. I think it's still just to throw a one. There is a penalty, I believe, if one of the units is eliminated, but it's just two to six were okay. Oh no, what's going on? I think that's the end of the uh, Americans push. That gets reduced. Only affects its uh, leadership morale, which might not be too bad anyway. Right, so I think that's it. We're back to normal. Sorry about that. Right, let's get the decks shuffled for the last time. There we are. And the solo assistant. Must remember to use it. <laughs> there we are, put that one back. Give him a shuffle. Here we go for the last time. It is. The Germans, so that gets put back. So we have to shuffle that in again. Oops, there we are. So markers are removed. Are there any disrupted? Yes. We've got that mortar which is disrupted. So we'll try that first. I think we've also got these, of course. Oh, no, hold on. Before we do that, getting ahead of myself again. We've got to check to see if that's in range in um, command. They've got a command of four. And that is out of range. One, two, three, four, five. So seven or less. Eight, no, out of command. So now we can do rallies. This needs rallying. Well, hey. <laughs> Old Stigler will be having a field day if he watches this. There we go. Right, that needs rallying and anything else, I think. Apart from this one here. Right, so seven or less for the mortar. Yes, unfortunately, although it is reduced. And this one, seven or less.
Yes. Oh dear. Right, let's zoom in a bit. Okay then, what are we going to do as the Germans? Well, the next thing we do is the old fire missions. So I think we'll try. The HQ can see. Might be best to try and hold these up because we've only got our last out as the Germans for this turn. And... Uh, they are victorious, so we'll see if we can disrupt this other unit here. Oh, God, I'm so mad at me today. This other unit. So, this is spotting. One at five. Oh, let's see first. Must use the old uh, debris, the old deck. Let's see. Yeah, off board or on board, there it is. Here we are, so sorry about that. Getting carried away, it's getting exciting. So one at five. Oh crikey, it does it. This will try and save with one dice because it's a hard target. Don't think it's uh, in the woods, is it? Is it? No, it's in the clear. So one at five to try and save. Five or more. Yes. So that. Is ops complete? That isn't. Well, I think it's time for the Germans to assault into that hex. It's clear, but they need an extra one, so it's two. They're coming in, and the HQ leadership modifier, I understand, applies to assault so it can add its leadership modifier to one of those to its unit that it's associated with hold on i am of course getting ahead of myself again thinking this is what i want to do but what does the bot want to do let's see it's close range oh it's it says look assault if firepower is greater than the target so the firepower of these units will be, if it assaults, six, seven, eight. And the firepower of these is one, three. So yes, so my instincts were correct. It will assault. Yes, it can add its leadership, just checking, add its leadership modifier to its associated unit if you like. But it also gets a bonus in the rules it says if infantry are attacking a hex where all the defending units are AFVs, reduce the infantry's assault to hit number by one. Right, don't look good. Let's do the uh, Germans first. So, the amount of, of dice they are throwing is six because it's three, four. Let me just show you if you can't see. There we are, three, four. But that goes up by two because of the uh, modifier of the HQ to eight. So they're going to throw eight dice. And because they're assaulting tanks, AFVs, this to hit number goes down by one. Crikey, so it's eight dice. <laughs> At three, that's bonkers. It's gonna make a lot of noise. Eight dice at three. Whoa, not that great. We've only got one, two, three. Three hits, whoops. Three hits on the tanks. The tanks now counterattack. That was right, wasn't it? One, two, three, yeah.
and they've got one here but this one is disrupted and although it's got two it's a salt term um, stats are two four it's two six because it is disrupted so we'll do that one first two six no nothing and this one is just one four and look good gets a hit So three hits have to be distributed evenly. So the first one would reduce this disrupted unit. The second one would disrupt that unit. And the third one, yes, doesn't matter. They're both reduced. So one of them is eliminated, I think. And they move back four hexes. One, two, three, four. They've got to sort of go down the middle here. They can't go nearer. But this one gets a disrupted and is now in that hex. And are both marked ops complete. Whoops. Got to put the HQ on there. I'm not sure if the HQ has to check because it's disrupted. I'll say yes. Needs a one. Or doesn't need a one. No. It's a four. So that's ops complete. As is that. These can't attack. They're at long range. But I want to see, I'm going to, let's see if these fire. We've got, oh, come here, two units there. Top unit, let's see if that fires. That's going to fire on, well, let's see what it says first, then we'll decide. Normal range. Move and fire, fire closest infantry well they're all the same so that's in the woods that's going to get that's in the town that's going to get uh, these two are going to get save throws this one's in the clear and i think they're going to go either for this or this let's see odds even it's going for the reduced unit Two at five. Let's see. No save for that because it's in the open. Oh, look at that. One hit. That gets eliminated. It's getting brutal. The bottom one. Well, what I'll do is I'll pop that on there. And these are going to have a go. Let's see if we get another okay from the deck. It's close range. Fire. Again, it makes sense to fire at the one in the open. So we're firing at this disrupted unit. Two at five. Oh no, it's a... Oh, did it wrong, didn't I? It's only one at five. No, that's right, because they've got the machine guns. Sorry. Panic over. Yet they get an extra firepower because of their machine guns. Whew. So, two at five. They get nothing. So, excuse fingers. Ops complete. What we got here, this one, no, that can't do anything. I want to move it though, funnily enough. I want to move it so it can support just in case. Remember, the Americans have got to control all these hexes. The only one they haven't controlled is this one. These three they've moved through, so I believe they control them still. So let's see what 
I'll tell you what, let's see what the Stug's doing. The Stug is at... Um, hmm. Well, is it going to fire at... Well, I think it's going to have a go at that. It's still at close range, so let's see what the, uh, the deck says. They're both at uh, close range for the Stug fire. So it's firing at this stack. I think it makes sense as it's an anti-tanky thing. So three at five, but as I forgot last time, it is at close range because it's got a range of six. So that's half, less than half. What is it going for? Is it going to try and eliminate this? Let's see what the dice says. Odds. Evens. It's odds. Whoops. So it's going for the good order tank. Three at four because of the close range. Ah, oh, just the one hit. The tank gets three dice and tries to get a six to save that one hit. It doesn't and is disrupted as well. This now has to check. If it gets a one, it is eliminated. Oh. <laughs> no. So that Stug is ops complete. The pioneers are gonna fire on the uh, parachute infantry. They are at close range. They're going to get two at four. They've just got to hold out until the end of the turn. Two at four, because they're at close range as opposed to two at five. No, they miss. Just this, I want to see what it does. It's going to go straight to the secondary orders because there's nothing, nothing it can fire at. AEO in cover closest to a good order unit fire. No, it can't. Oh, well it could, because it's been given orders to. It's in cover. It's at long range. So it is. One at six, two at six. That's its orders. Two at six for a uh, two at six for armor piercing and gets a hit. Oh, should have said which one. I'm terrible for that. So, which one? The odds even. Odds, it's going for the reduced one. That has to throw a six with three dice to see if it saves. And it does. So all's well there. I think that's it. Who's next? It's the airborne. And they're going to assault, I think, because they've got to. Let's try and take this. So they're going to assault. They have three, six, eight because of this. Uh, Modifier. They also are what's known as, I think, augmented, because one of their dice, is, uh, this number here, has a little, I can get it in focus, yeah, a little plus. So we'll do them separate then, because one of those die rolls, if it's bad, can be re rolled. So six, seven, eight will do. 
the one with the HQ, so that's going to be 3, 4, 5 at 4. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So we'll, we don't need to re-roll any of those. We've got one, two, three, four, and we'll do this one. So that's got four already, do not look good. And this one is gonna throw three, and it can re-roll a bad one. Four as we want. Well, we've got one, so we're gonna re-roll this. Ah, another two, so that's six. Now, these are counter-attacking. Put that on there a minute. They are throwing, they've also, this uh, Pioneer has also got one of those little pluses, but it's on the other number. But according to the rules, it doesn't make a difference. It means it can just re-roll re one of their throws, I think. So we'll do that first. They're throwing three dice and trying to get four with the Pioneers. They don't throw any, so they re let's look, they don't throw anything, so they're re-rolling one of these to see if they can get a four at least. And they don't. Nothing. The Stug has two five assault stats, so two dice, five doesn't get anything either. Oh, so six hits. One, two, both disrupted. Three, four, both reduced. Five, six, both eliminated. Crikey. Hope that's right. That was devastating. Them paras. We'll not get on the wrong side of them, mate. You want them on your side. So they move in. Unfortunately, they haven't controlled the hex of the town yet. Oh, after all that, uh, after that heroic assault, that's it. What's next? End turn. End turn. That is the end of the scenario. Wanted the tanks to get, at least we could have tried one, two, three, four. We could have got into one of the hexes. Not sure if that is a victory. It does say control all the hexes, so I think a moral victory for the Americans, especially the brave paratroopers. So, what a cracking game. I'm sorry about my misplays. I get excited and forget rules, forget about the, uh, the deck and misplay things. I try to catch most of them. That's what I tend to do. But the idea is you're looking at this game and thinking, oh, this looks fun. Or, no, don't think that's for me. So I hope that's come, a, come across, you know, whether or not uh, this is your cup of tea. i tell you what, thumbs up to uh, Lock and Load Publishing. I would love to have a go at some of the other Nation at War series, the Desert one, Desert Heat, because it's got Brits in it. Uh, but if you want me to play another scenario from this one, let me know. I'll be up for that. I've got a bit of a queue, but it might take a while, but yes, it will go on the queue. And if you want me to play uh, any of the other one, there's a Stalingrad one as well, Contact Lock and Load and say I saw Rough Swordsman play White Star Rising. I'd like to see him play Desert Heat or Stalingrad. Send him one. <laughs> they might do, mightn't they? Or if any games you'd like me to play that I and I don't have them, by all means contact the um, the companies. I will be more than happy to do an unboxing and do a playthrough of those. So I'll leave that up to you. This has been a learning to play <laughs> playthrough of. White Star Rising, from Lock and Load Publishing, part of the Nations at War series. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe, please like the video and push the bell. That'll tell you when I upload stuff. 
And as always, a big, big thank you to my subscribers. Thank you. So till the next time, you all take care and be safe. And goodbye.